afternoon, church. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Bless the seven people. Good afternoon, church. Yeah. There are people who I think I cannot make it today because uh, some of them were around uh, 60 people yesterday who attended the seminars and the conference. It was a fantastic uh, time with God in a time of training. And I think most of them is compared to people from Bristol, a uh, few people from uh, Bournemouth and Poole, and uh, also a few people from Dorchester. But we're so uh, blessed today, even uh, those people from Dorchester, we can still see them with us today. Amen? Napaka natin mga taga-Dorchester dyan. Bournemouth, Poole. Black and Lalo. And that must be someone from Wales. Si Arby, taga-Wales yan. Okay? who happen to be based here in Sabah. <laughs> okay? Amen po ba? Have you got your Bible with you? Okay, then just keep up for the meantime because I'm not going to get the message. Amen? Uh, just for a few announcements. I was uh, assigned to do the announcement. Okay. I'm going to have to for the few announcements. Alright, so we're having a blessed Sunday today. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a few announcements that's regarding our church. On the 15th of November, that weekend, 15th to 17th of November, we're going to have another encounter weekend. So please be excited about that. Come on, invite your friends, your family, anybody you can think of, the person you met in the street, you know, bring them over and let's have them meet God. <laughs> and then on the 24th of November, we'll have a Workers' Appreciation Day. We're going to have an event here. We're going to say thank you to all the people who work so hard in service to the Lord. And then on the 29th of November, to December 1, we're going to have a primary summit and calendar planning retreat. It's going to be a retreat, so you, you know, we're going to have fun, we're going to be refreshed, spend time in the presence of the Lord, but also plan for the next year. That's going to be conducted in the Isle of Wight, so hopefully we'll, we'll have nice weather. And on December 22, we'll have our Christmas party. So, uh, we'd like to celebrate the birth of our Lord, so please also bring your friends so we can tell them all about how... God sent His Son to us. Alright? So, that's all. Praise God. Thank you, Vibe. And also, this coming Saturday, uh, we have the invited uh, missionaries who are also training people who like to get involved in foreign and uh, local uh, mission uh, thing that we are doing. Uh, we are also into mission and only into discipleship. For, so, for those who are uh, involved, and who haven't enrolled yet or haven't heard the mission uh, seminar so far, you are still welcome to join. It's going to be around uh, nine weeks of uh, training, three hours training per week. You cannot go into the foreign mission trip or experience unless you're going to go through this process. Because there must be uh, some do's and don'ts and some things you have to consider uh, if you're going to go for a mission. So obviously, and any bottle you have preparations, right? So we're not just gonna go straight into the bottle without having a preparation. I think on my list we have around 17 people who express their uh, intentions and decides to be a part of the mission thing. Amen, Boba? As far as I know, if I can remember, uh, me, myself, and I, Angela in the Express, some of the people here at the Mabel, uh, Ibailin and uh, Brother Ferdy, Janine, Carlo, Cassie. So if you would like to be a part of this one, so see me after the service, okay? The venue every Saturday is going to be around 9 o'clock in the morning until uh, 12. It's going to be in the uh, Pastor Church office, don't go sa Salabas. Amen? So for those who are interested, please see me. It's really nice. You know, some people uh, have... Uh, Expressed their um, desire to to go to Brother Man, I think would like to go to Syria, <laughs> Palestine. We will really mean it, okay? I would like to go to Egypt, okay? So I can ride a jeep. No. Egypt, some people the way. We got some from Israel, Egypt, Palestine, Morocco, Syria. I'm not kidding, po. I said 10 for the window. Syria, Iraq, Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. Uh, basically, the 10 for the window, the, the, the Muslim countries, the Muslim world. Amen? We are our Muslim brothers and sisters. 
So if you'd like to be a part of this one, just see me after this one. Amen? And now let's uh, prepare our Bible and turn your Bible, open your Bible. Okay, it's open now. If you don't have a Bible, uh, open your holy iPhone. Okay. And I'm going to ask Brother Manny to come forward to give us a message this morning. This afternoon. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor. Keep your Bibles open. Introduction to the Okay, before I start, I let us all pray. It's just to be decided to the Lord because we cannot do anything about it. Almighty God, since the time began, you are God. You are the God who created the heavens, you are the God who created the earth. And out of the goodness of your heart, you created us. Lord, you are the God of Abraham, you are the God of Jacob, you are the God of Isaac. And you are the same God who showed might and power that we are worshiping today. You are the same God who longs for a relationship with your children. Lord, as we come to your presence, as we, Lord, as we talk about your words, my prayer, Father God, that this afternoon you would reveal something to us. Reveal something to each one of us here. Touch our hearts and make yourself known. But as we go out of this place, Father God, we have something that we can carry from you because you have revealed something. Lord, let this not be an after that we can call a waste, but let this be an after that we encounter you. We heard something from you. Let your word speak, Father God, and Holy Spirit, give us that understanding. We want to learn from you. We want to hear from you. Bless this one or here. And Holy Spirit, once again, we ask for instruction, we ask for your teaching, we ask for comfort, and we ask for understanding. We rely everything to you. Once again, you are the God that we serve, the God of love, and the God who loves his children. I submit to you the rest of the afternoon in the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Okay, when we were at the at the conference yesterday, I was thinking because Pastor asked me to just be ready to give the word today. And both Doc Alvin and the, the, the main speakers, Doc Alvin and Bishop Ancho, have stated something about the past. Now, we, we have lots of lots of topics yesterday, but one thing that that strikes to me is how, how they talk about the past. They were just passing things. They were just passing passing comments about the past. But it strikes me, God, God, God was speaking to me that all of us have a past. We even say that there, there are things in the past that we are not proud of. We did in the past that we are not proud. So how do we deal with this? Because as what uh, Doug Abin said, our past is a tool of the enemy against us. So let us be careful of our past. You know, because it can come crushing us. So we need to face it head on. We need to understand what our past is doing to us. And we need to understand what we can do with our past. As children of God, we need to be aware. And as part of Pastor, Pastor Benny's series about conquest, we need to conquer our past. We need to be victorious. We need to overcome our past. Because if not, then that can be used by the enemy as a tool against us. As an illustration, in our homes, we throw old things because we want to make a space. Yeah? May mga bagay that we, we, that we want to throw away because we want the space. Or we want to, 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 to increase our freedom, we, we want to let go of our past. But there are times and there are things in our past that keeps on hindering us. In our service to God, our past pulls us down. And that's what we want to address this afternoon. 
That's what, that's what we want to, to, to face head on. Because this, this past, we need to overcome. This past, we need to be victorious about. Uh, the worst thing that can happen to us if we allow, allow our past to define us. No? That's the worst thing that can happen. I'm not sure if you're just looking at it. Yeah. We only have one verse. In Ecclesiastes 3 6, and it's, it's the last part. A time to keep and a time to throw away. There are things in our lives that we need to throw away. There are things in our lives that we need to, to, to turn our back on. Because these things are trying to hinder us. These things are trying to hinder our service with our God. So, a time to keep and a time to throw away. Let, let's, we, we need to evaluate ourselves. We need to assess ourselves. What are the things that I need to leave behind? Because this is not allowing me to move forward in my service with God. So, I, I leave it all to you. We all have our past. I leave it all to you to define, to, to identify the things of the past that you need to throw away. Because our first point, as a Christian, as children of God, your past doesn't define you. No? Your past is past. No, it doesn't need to define you. The definition of our lives at this time as children of God is we are beloved. That should be the definition of our lives now, as children of God. Whatever things you have done in the past, they are all in the past. No? The thing that, that, is, that should be foremost in our, in our mind is we are beloved. We are children of God. Whatever bad things we've done in the past, yeah. it's all gone. It's all done. It should not define us today because they are the past. So it should not define you. Uh, we all know John 3.16. That's where our, our identity is. We are God's children and we are loved. And another thing that should define, that should define us is we are not condemned any longer. No? There are things in the past that condemn us, that keeps on coming in our minds. I, I have this friend back home in the Philippines and she has a sister. She is a Christian and her sister is not. That every time he did something wrong, her sister keeps on reminding her. No, you did that thing. Aren't you ashamed? You were once like this. And for some time, this keeps on belittling her. This, this knocks her confidence down, even if she, she was already a child of God. Because this sister keeps on reminding her, no, you are bad. No, you did something bad in the past. And somehow this affects her until one day she, finds a, she found the courage and tells her sister, yes, I did in the past, but I am renewed now. Yeah. Yes, I did this in, yes, I was wrong in the past, but now I am forgiven. Yeah. Now I am a child of God I, and I can let go of my past. Yeah. So we need to stand every time we are condemned, every time... The enemy attacks us about our past. We need to stand and say, that is the past. I am new now. Amen. I am a new creation. I am transformed. I, 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 and I am renewed by the blood of Jesus Christ. So, Christians, children of God, our past does not need to define us. No? We have our own definition of our lives now. A new definition. And that is being a loved child of God. Beloved one. So... Why would you then allow your past to tell you who you are? No. Th th think of it. No. Our past is already the past. It should not tell us, it, sh it should not influence us of our actions. We should go above it. The past is past. Yes, we did something wrong in the past, but we are not the past now. We are the present. And I think it was Bishop Anchu who said yesterday, God is not interested in your past, he is interested of your now. So what you are doing now, God is interested. Hindi na kung ano yung ginawa mo noon. It's not that the past sins that you have committed, they are all gone, they are all wiped away by the blood of Jesus Christ. You are a clean person now because of the blood of Jesus Christ. You are a new creation. Your past, again, your past sins should not need to define you. The second point that I want to I have to do this in time because there are 10 points. 
The second point is your past circumstances can't be changed, but you can change. Yeah? You can change your past. It already happened. But you can change on how you deal with your past. No? Those circumstances in the past, there, there's nothing you can do about it. It's all done. Nagawa mo na But you can change on how you deal with it. If you choose na lalaitin, that's Tagalog. If you choose to if you choose to be mocked by your past, your past. If you choose to be mocked by your past, then it's your choice. But as a child of God, you should need to stand on your feet and on your ground that my past is God. I can change how I deal with my past. I can be stronger with my past. It should not, it should not defeat me. It should not conquer me. But I should be the one who conquers my past. Okay. So forget about forget about thinking of things that you can change your past. No, wala ka na doon. Accept it. You have done it. But there is something you can do now. So that your past should not be should not be in your present and should not be in your future. So you cannot change the circumstances, but you can change. Again, mindset. Romans 12, 2. But be ye transformed by the, by the renewing of your mind. So we can be transformed, we can change our outlook even if we have a colorful past. Or if we have a black past. Alright, even the consequences of the past choices can be used for the glory of God when you ask Him to transform your mind and heart. So those consequences that happened in the past, we can turn it into something where we can glorify God. Yeah. It, you, should not be, you, should not, you should not remain in a defeatist mode. Even if you were, if, even if you were defeated in the past, but you can, still, you can still come out victorious. Because you can change. Okay? Next point. Your past of shame is forgiven in Christ. Napatawad na tayo. So why dwell on things in the past when we are already forgiven? I have this story that... You, you know what? God said... When you sin and when you ask for forgiveness of your sins, you throw it in the deepest ocean. Itapon mo na yun doon. And put a sign there saying, no fishing. Huwag mo nang bibingwitin ulit yung tinapon mo na. Tinapon mo na yun. Even God has already forgotten it. So leave it there. It's already buried. It's already done with. The blood of Jesus Christ has already made it clean. So don't try to fresh it out again. Kalimutan natin. That was our past. We are already forgiven. And our forgiveness has come with a cost. Napakamahal ng forgiveness natin. But there, sometimes the tendency natin is to keep on going back. It is, now is the time to stand against the enemy and telling him, no, you are already defeated. You may remind me of my past, but I will not be defeated. All you can do is remind me. But I can conquer you by the blood of Jesus Christ. So your past of shame is forgiven in Christ. That's why children of God, we, beloved children of God, can stand against the enemy because our past, the shame of our past is already forgiven. And it is already forgotten. Nakalimutan. If God has, has if God has chosen to forget it, bakit hindi tayo? Why do we keep on remembering it? Wala tayo mapapala eh. What, what, what would it do if we keep on reminding ourselves of our past? No? Let it go. Hayaan na natin. Again, it is already forgiven in Christ. We all have sinful past. But none are out of reach of God's mercy. Lahat tayo nagkakamali. We all did something in our past. But let us remember that everything is covered by God's mercy. No matter how big it is, 
No matter how shameful we did, we act before, it is covered and it is forgiven by God's mercy. Na abut na yan. It has already been, I mean, God's mercy has reached it. So there's no point of being feeling guilty. There's no point of torturing yourself that I did this in the past. And I, I, I need I need to, to suffer the consequence. Yes, there is a consequence of the past, but even you can come out victorious out of that consequence. 